so good to see you all today. It's me, Reverend Jess. And these are my stairs, not my couch. I'm doing something different today. Um, I hope that you had a wonderful week. I hope that you have been uh, kind to your adults around you, your teachers and all those people, but also to your parents. We've been kind to your siblings. You got all your work in, you done all the things you're supposed to do. I hope that you've done those things. I want you to know that you've been on my mind. I've been praying for you all. And um, I miss you. I <laughs> I really do. And I'm hoping that uh, you all are having um, as good of a time as possible uh, while you're at home. Okay? So, um, I don't have a lot to talk about today. Um, over these last couple of weeks, we have been talking about the life and the resurrection. The life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. <laughs> Um, we had Easter Sunday, and then after that, after Easter Sunday, last week we talked about um, the experience of the disciples and their encounter with Jesus uh, after Jesus had risen. And not just disciples as in the twelve, but also those women uh, who um, were dedicated to Jesus and had come to meet his body. This week, uh, we're going to continue this conversation about uh, these happenings after Jesus had uh, risen from the dead. And uh, I really like this story. It's found in Luke, the 24th chapter. It starts with the 13th verse. It goes into the 35th verse. 13th is 35th verse. Then this story we find, we find, we are introduced to um, two men who are traveling to Emmaus. On their way to Emmaus, uh, they come across this other traveler. And this other traveler asks a peculiar question. Uh, he asks them, why is everyone so sad in Jerusalem? Why is everyone's face so long? And the two men are like, are you the only person who uh, <laughs> has been in Jerusalem, who's traveled to Jerusalem and doesn't know what's been going on these last three days? Have you not heard of Jesus of Nazareth? And they start telling you about Jesus of Nazareth and how they were followers of Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus had been crucified. Uh, they thought he was going to be king, but he had been killed uh, and placed in a tomb. But even more disturbing than that, is that some of the women who were believers as they were, who were in their company, had come to them and told them that Jesus was not in the tomb. Not only was he not in the tomb when they got there, but there were angels that were hanging around telling them that Jesus had risen from the dead. Now, they didn't know what to believe. These men were understandably distraught. And for good reason, right? Because their leader, the one whom they depended on, they saw him die. They knew he was dead. And now these women were saying that he wasn't in the tomb. And a lot of things have been feeling distraught. Have you ever been in that position before? I mean, honestly. Have you ever been in a place in your life where things didn't seem to be going well and they just seemed to get worse? You know, you weren't really feeling this class that you were signed up for. And then it got worse. You didn't do well on one test and then you tried for the next one and you didn't do well on the next one. Or maybe it's in a relationship with someone. You thought that this person was a good friend to you and then you realized things were kind of off between you and then it just got worse where y'all started beefing. I don't know what it is. It's something about when things are bad and then they get worse. Like things aren't good and then they get even worse than that. That's always a sticky place to be. It's a place where you can end up feeling distraught defeated, depleted of 
all of your desire to participate in that aspect of your life, right? You know, you can feel as if you have lost all that is important to you. When you get into those things are bad and they've just gotten worse kind of situation. So these men were kind of complaining about it. And the traveler says to them, do you remember what Jesus was teaching? Jesus told you that he would have to die. And he tells them this by going through all of the teachings um, that Jesus had. And then not just that, but going through uh, all of the prophecies that have been made since the time of Moses about the Savior. This man starts recounting everything, all the reasons why they ought to be excited that Jesus is not in the tomb. You know, it's difficult to uh, reframe bad situations um, in good life. It can be really hard to do that. Um, I don't know if you've ever hung up a picture before, uh, but when I first moved out of my parents' home and I was buying my first, you know, decorative thing to put on the wall and it needed uh, a frame, I didn't realize how important it was to measure my picture. And so I had gotten some pictures while I was in school, like some prints of Billy Holiday, but I didn't pay attention to exactly how big the picture was. And so when I went to put it in a frame, I realized that the frame that I selected from it, just kind of eyeballing it, wasn't big enough for it. So I returned that frame and I went back and I got another frame, right? Again, I didn't measure it. I just kind of eyeballed it. <laughs> but this time, the frame fit the picture, but it had this thing called matting around it. So this thing that frames the picture. So the so my visual of Billy Holiday was obstructed because it had this trim around it in the picture. And that's the thing about reframing our visual, our visualization of something, right? These men were in a certain state in their lives. They had a certain belief about uh, how life should have went and they were disappointed about how uh, what happened with Jesus and all those kind of things and they had a one kind of visual of what that meant in their mind that meant that they had been defeated that meant that Jesus wasn't who he had said he was that meant that things uh, were bad and they had to start over find a new savior but what the, the traveler was attempting to do was to reframe their understanding of what happened by actually measuring the picture, right? They, the, the traveler starts recounting all of the teachings of Jesus, all of the prophecies, all of the things that have been foretold in order to put their situation into perspective. This, the death of Jesus and his resurrection, and then not being able to find his body, was exactly what Jesus had said would happen. Jesus had said that he would have to die. But in three days, he would rise again. Jesus had said that. It had been foretold through prophets. Um, throughout their whole Jewish heritage and history that their savior, the savior that they were uh, that they were looking for, their savior was coming. And when he came, he would be rejected, killed. But he would rise again. 
So this traveler is telling them all of this and and the two guys, they are really into it. They're like, okay, cool. You know, they're starting to remember the things that Jesus had taught them, but it's starting to get dark. So they say, oh, we're gonna stay here in this inn. And Travis, well, I gotta keep going. I've gotta keep headed towards uh, Emmaus. And the men are like, no, no, no. Stay with us, stay with us just one night. Let's continue to spend some time talking. Stay with us. So the man says, okay, cool, I'll stay with you. And they get, uh, they get into, the, into the inn and they have food. And the man takes the bread and breaks it and starts serving it uh, to the two travelers that were with them. And as soon as he does that, their eyes are opened and they realize that the man that they were with was Jesus. <laughs> And interesting. Their eyes were open. They realized they had been with Jesus. They thought they had been by themselves. They thought that all was lost. They thought that the women were crazy for saying that Jesus had risen from the dead. Even that's how the scripture says, but that's kind of underlined. That's how I interpreted it. They just, they just didn't believe. And then Jesus their eyes are opened to his presence when he breaks bread. You know, um, in church sometimes after the preacher pre has preached and somebody comes up to do the invitation or to do final remarks or whatever, a guest preacher has preached and then a preacher gets up, the pastor gets up and he said, had not our hearts burned? Had not our hearts burned? That's where that passage, that's where that comes from, this passage of scripture. Because the two um, travelers were like, wow, look at all that we have learned. Had not our hearts burned in his presence. <laughs> Here's something that's interesting that I want you to keep in mind. It is when Jesus breaks bread that, uh, that the men are able to realize who he is. It's in the breaking of the bread. If you remember, before Jesus died, um, in the upper room, he did something very similar. He broke bread. And through his breaking of bread and the process that we now call communion, right? um, the eating of the bread and the drinking of the wine, um, this instance is a, a reflection of that, right? Jesus breaks bread, and in, being, in the bread being broken, he is made known to the men. And this is what I want you guys to keep in mind, okay? Jesus breaks bread and serves. And, and that's how they know him to be who he is. I just want to challenge you over these next couple of weeks as we continue to you know, shelter in place and stay home. Consider serving, right? It's interesting, isn't it, that the one thing that Jesus asks us to do in remembrance of him is us acting out the process of him serving others. Even in what is said during our communion time, Take, this is my body broken for you. Take it and eat it. This is, uh, this represents uh, the New Testament in my blood. Take and drink it. You know? Isn't it interesting? That the one thing that Jesus asks us to do in remembrance of him is a reenacting of Jesus serving his disciples and saying the things that uh, foretell the ultimate act of service that he'll do for us, which is his death. Because through his death, we're able to reach salvation. I want you to remember that. In this time where you may feel like giving up, like things are super, super bad, there's no way that they can get any better, just to strong, alone. Um, where you may feel slight, you may feel depressed. You 
uh, missing out on activities that you would have really looked forward to, uh, even trips that you may have had planned, having to uh, to review or change the things that you uh, originally anticipated happening this summer, all of that. I want, when you think of these things, I want you to consider serving. I know it's hard, but consider doing something for someone else, caring for someone else. Last week, I encouraged you to do something kind for someone. And this week, I'm going to continue that. There's the one thing that Jesus teaches us in his death and resurrection and the access to salvation we have because of it is that service, serving others, caring for someone else is the ultimate way to show that you love them. That's what Jesus did for us. So consider that. Look, I don't have a memory verse this week. So you're off this week. I want to encourage you to continue to work on your other verses. Ooh, 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 there's still a prize um, for you if you memorize all your verses. Also, I know I talked about doing a hangout this week and it didn't happen. I, had, I did a young adult one this week, um, this past week, but hopefully all, all things work out well. We'll have a get together this week. I'm looking forward to it. Listen, I want you to know that I am care about you all a lot. I love you. I have been um, very uh, concerned about you. Um, I've been praying for you. Um, and I I'm hopeful that all things are well with you. No, you can reach out to me anytime. Some of you already have. <laughs> but you can reach me at any time. Um, if I don't pick up or if I don't respond right away, know that I will get back to you. I will get back to you. I will get back to you. Okay? Look, be easy. Be good. Be kind. See you next week.